Hi guys and welcome back to another fly time tutorial. So a couple of weeks back I did a top five back end bankers and one of the flies that were amongst that was this white snake. One of the subscribers have asked how it's been tied and that's what we're going to do today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well, you better strap in for this one folks, it might take some time, it's quite a complex fly and articulated beast, so we're going to start, I'll go through it stage by stage, I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. So the hook in the vise is a Hanak H200 barbless hook, it's at size 8, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. Now this hook is going to be my stinger if you like, the hook that's going to be at the tail of the fly. The first thing I want to do is add in my connector. Now what I'm using to do the connection is some backing braid that you see here. Now there's all different manner of doing this. Some people like to use uh, braid for carp fishing, it, you get a lot more movement but it's a bit of a compromise so what you get with this is you don't get it all tangled up and it gets all interwoven and ends up breaking on you. This is solid and it's going nowhere and what I like to do is take three inches. Now it's 7.5 centimeters for those of you that are on the metric system but three inches and uh, if you do this you'll get consistent length with all your flies. So I've got that ready. The next thing I want to prepare is the actual zonker strip itself. Now I'm using uh, this zonker strip from Troutline. It's really good quality. It's at four millimeters and the first thing I want to do with this is get it all combed out. So they're usually pretty good to be fair but it's always worthwhile for the amount you're about to use just get your comb through it and even with good quality stuff you'll find you've still got a little bit of fur and you just want to take that out. You can put it to the side and add it to some dubbing if you're really tight like I am. The other thing I want to do is cut in a small V just at the tail. Now what that does is it thins out the end here and you get a lot more movement in the water when you do this. So I'll just give it a last brush out, now I've cut my V in and that's ready to be attached to the fly. Now the thread I'm going to be using today is Nano Silk. it's at 3 aught, which is 200D and it's a white thread as you can see here and as always with Nano Silk, what you want to do is just get a little bit of super glue onto the shank and use your thread to spread it up and down. Now I'm just going to get a bed of thread down first. I can remove the rat's tail at this point and using 3 watt when you're used to using 12 watt is a bit of a a bit of a, a change but uh, there we go. So I've brought my thread back up to the top and I've got my little bit of backing here. And what I want to do is I want to go down through the eye. I want, I want to catch it along the entire length. I'll just come up to the eye and then I'm going to work it all the way back. Now, this has never failed me. Uh, it's never pulled out, it always holds. So I've got that, I've got it trapped in, and that's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing then is to attach our zonker strip. So I've got my prepared piece that I showed you how to do earlier. What I want to do next is just bring back enough so that I can tie it in at the top of where I cut my V. Helps to dampen it down sometimes, just to get that bit out of the way. And I'll damp down the other, the other side, so I'm just separating that strip. Now it's a bit fiddly, especially initially. So I'll get one turn in, two turns in, and with three all, that's about all you need. So the next thing I'm going to do is come in behind. I'm going to pull the zonker strip over the top and get a couple of turns in. The next stage then is to add in some holographic 
silver chenille. Now, you don't have to do this. This is a nice to have, but I like to have it in the back of my hook. And I've got a bit here ready to go. I'll just expose the core and I'll trap that in. Now, as you can see, I'm going up and down on this braid several times as I'm tying in material, which generally means it's not going to go anywhere. I'll bring it all the way up to the top and I'll leave a couple of millimetres at the front there. Then I can bring my chenille over, try not to clip that point. The 200 does have a very long, sharp hook and you don't want to be catching your materials on that hook point. It'll ruin your day. So, uh, as I said in the video a couple of weeks back, um, the snakes are relatively new to me. I wasn't there at the, the start of the revolution, if you like, because it's just simply not allowed in competitions. And I, for much of my time fly fishing, I've only ever fished competition regulation flies. I never got round to fishing the big stuff, but while wow, I've had my eyes opened, these flies are super effective. Now, the next thing then is to bring over our zonker strip. And what we're looking for is it to come right the way over the chenille back. And you're looking for the bit where you've rested your thread. And what you want to do is again, helps to dampen it down, is find that gap. Can be quite awkward, but I think I've managed it. Again, I'm going to get a couple of turns over the zonker strip to hold it into place. I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to get a couple of turns just by the eye. Now, so far so good. I'm just going to damp this down, keeping all them stray fibres out your way does help. So the next thing is we're going to finish off this stage of the fly. I'm going to come in with my hook finish tool and I'm going to get one, two, three. Once I've got it to this stage, you need about six hands. Just pull that little bit of braid out the way and you can finish off the fly. Now, believe me, when you start doing this, as I'm doing it here, this bit will be really fiddly. Uh, but you get used to it and it takes me longer to explain it now than it does to actually tie it. So I'm going to finish off by just coming in below and adding a spot of super glue just to make sure that whip finish doesn't come undone later on. So we can take that out the vise now and get ready for the next stage. Now the hook in the vise is a Hanak H970 barbless hook, although that makes a little difference because once we've tied the fly to this, we're going to take away this hook. Some people like to keep them on, I don't think they swim quite right, so I always trim mine away, but we'll come on to that towards the end. Again, before I cast my thread on to this section of the fly, I'll get some super glue on the shank just to hold it into place and I'll bring that all the way round. Now, depending on what length you want your body to be, I don't want this entire length of hook, uh, you can park your thread where you're ready. The next thing we've got to do then is attach the fly to the front of the hook. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come down through the eye, like so, and I want to keep it just nice and even there. The tail, you'll notice, is coming to the end of my fly. Then what I can do is come, bring my thread up, catch it right in at the eye there, and then come all the way back. Now, it helps if you keep your braid on top of the shank. It'll just help with the swimming. And trust me, I know because if you get it, if you don't get this on top of the shank, it does start to swim in all kinds of funny ways, and you don't want that. 
So, I've got that attached now. Again, this is going to go nowhere. I've got the eye of the hook and I've got it folded double. So, the next thing I want to do again is add a little bit of the chenille to the body. Just trap that in. Like so. And then I'm going to come all the way up. I'm going to leave about 5mm before the eye there. Leave plenty of room to build my head. Now, do check that braid's not uh, deviating from the course I want it to take. And then I can bring my body up the shank. Now these uh, kind of flies, they're not for everyone. I know they're shunned by some, but what I would say is give them a chance and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, especially if, you, if you're if you a fan of the small still water fisheries. These will sometimes clean the places out. So there we've got our, uh, our body in. And what I want to do next is grab the back of the hook. So I'm grabbing the back of the hook rather than the zonker strip. Because what you don't want to do is this being too loose and you don't want it being too taut. It's got to be just right. So grab the hook, see where it wants to come. And then again, this bit's a little bit fiddly, trying to get in, in behind all that zonker fur. Dampen it down helps. Then I can come over with my thread and get two or three turns. I don't mind getting a few more on this occasion because we're going to use the thread to build a head. So I'll just come in with my scissors and remove the remainder of that zonka strip. And there's enough there for another one. So, so far so good. Let's just uh, slick all this back now. Now, I like to add some runners, and what I'm using here is some Simplify uh, Silver Crinkle Flash, and I only want two or three strands. It doesn't, you don't need a lot. And I want to take enough so that it will go down the side off the fly. Don't want it all uh, even either. Try and uh, just pull it out so you get a nice mix of strand. So I'll grab that in. I'll catch it over with a couple of turns. Then I can bring it around to your side of the fly, like so. Again, a little bit of moisture on your fingers, just to help get all that fibre out of the way. And then what we can do is we can concentrate on building a small head and it doesn't take long with three aught I can tell you that <laughs> so we've got that head built in no time at all courtesy of the thicker nano silk I'll come in a three turn whip finish and then I can remove my thread so what we want to do is seal the head with some super glue before we attempt to add our little eyes. Now I'm going to have to leave this to dry and by the magic of video and the power of Grayskull we've got a nice dry head. So what I want to do next is come in with my Pro Marker and just add a couple of very small eyes. Now there is another way of doing this of course. Well there's more than one actually. You could buy some eyes and uh, affix them to the 
to the fly. I don't think it's uh, it's worth it really. And you can add beady eyes, which will obviously add to the movement of the fly. And another way, again, is adding booby eyes, which really makes the fly pop in the water. But uh, this is the pattern that I put on the video a couple of weeks back. So this is the pattern we're going to have. I'm going to come in now with some Solaris Bone Dry resin, just to finish off and make sure that the eyes don't fade while while we start fishing. Uh, this will seal, seal that marker in and it keeps it as good as new so you get plenty of use out the flies. So we've got that in place. Put the lid on. I've had a super glue accident already today and the last thing I need is pouring that expensive resin all over my vise as well. So just get my UV lamp onto the head and give this a little spin. Now, I did explain how I would fish this in, in the video before, but if you're new to the channel, uh, please think about subscribing and also give the video a like. Now, that's not what I was gonna say, but it just came to me. What I, I do when I'm fishing these is generally I like to fish them on uh, a, sink, a sunk line, probably count the fly down between 10 and 20 seconds, and then a nice roly-poly retrieve. Just fish it on its own, around 10, 10 foot of tippet material, and hang on. Uh, the takes can be absolutely thunderous, and it's definitely worth not fishing much below 10 pounds when you're using these flies. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.